That at 7 o'clock, I'd like to call the September 9th, 2024 Summersworth School Board meeting to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Uh, recused. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Bridget Jamison. Here. Gemma Saldati. Let me uh, uh, edit my excused, not recused. Sarah O'Brien Hart is excused this evening. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you please join me in the pledge? <clears throat> Okay, welcome. Um, agenda item number one is comments by visitors this evening. Any comments by visitors this evening, please come on up, say your name, uh, your ward address, and be happy to hear you. Richard Brooks, Ward 1, 18 Linden Street. As you know, I spoke last time and just kind of ran out. Sorry, I just very busy lately and can't seem to find enough time in the day. But I wanted to say thank you for at least posting the titles of the policies at your last posting. I appreciate that. I'm sure other people will appreciate it as well. Um, as I said, I've been collecting signatures for a petition for this. I did it years ago. Everybody I ever asked has signed it. I think I've had one person say they had to think about it. They signed it later. But it's just, you know, I, I think people want the information. It's just hard to find. And unfortunately, the city, there's been some improvement, but very little. You know, they just don't post it out very far ahead. They put it on the wall downstairs, and it just seems like we could do better. You know, a longer notice, something that reaches out. And, and that's basically what I'm after. And, you know, again, collecting petition hopefully to encourage the council to adopt that sort of policy because the state only requires 24 hours which is crazy especially when it's only posted on a wall downstairs <clears throat> so they may be being the minimum but it's not very good if you ask me and I'm sure a lot of people agree um, so with that you'll probably see me stop in just hoping to catch people that are here to collect signatures and I don't think it'll be long doing so and uh, of course I'm sure everybody knows get out and vote tomorrow I can't be electioneering up here but it's always important to vote in local elections. So thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Richard. All right. Any other comments by visitors? Seeing none, agenda item number two, comments by board members. We'll have another opportunity at the end of the meeting to have another comment. Yes, board member Brown. If I can just make a comment before Richard leaves. <laughs> That as uh, chair of policy committee, um, I will be reading uh, uh, full titles and helping uh, the public follow when we are talking about uh, um, policy. So, heard you. We're changing it. Thank you. Board member Saldati. Yeah, I also just want to say, Mr. Brooks, I have seen the you know person the volunteer work you've done on our the Facebook group for the town the city, and I actually. Um, I'm really grateful to you for the fact that you do that and I do agree that these are issues that affect all of us and that there absolutely are more people in the community that want to know what's going on and want to be communicated with and I think um, I definitely welcome whether it's school board or specifically with the city any policy that helps make communication and access to information easier and uh, yeah I, so I definitely support the effort to have the city specifically if there's some kind of I don't know a mandate or some kind of policy change we can decide as a city that says we want people to be up here we want people to be joining us in these conversations and in order to do that they need the information in advance board member Clark well I was going to say the same but two others came before me but yeah I am I really appreciate all that you're trying to do trying to get awareness out there and i agree with the facebook um page it's very helpful i actually like sometimes search out your page what's happening like, okay so i appreciate that too so thank you oh yeah board member wentworth go ahead thank you i know mr uh brooks from uh different polling locations so um thank you for being such a active member of our community um, and one of the things i remember being on the other side was um which we're about to do next is the consent calendar which i was always like what is going on like all these motions and whatever the consent calendar um, just to put it out there is just a list of our uh, what we have coming up and so it's just that's why it's usually a real quick um, 
adopt adopt it and uh, kind of vote it through. So just to be clear about that, that's usually what that's about. So it's super lickety split. So thanks. Yeah, what else? No, I, I mean, also Mr. Brooks, I think it's wonderful for the holding accountable, kind of keeping an understanding of it and we welcome it. And I think that like there'll be shifts as hopefully you'll see, you'll see and a response to um, your comments and your insights. So thank you. All right, any other comments? All right, moving to the consent calendar. Agenda item number three, it does say here in uh, italics, items for the board to approve that are not discussed at the meeting. So for clarity's sake, um, we are able to remove any items from the consent calendar. We are able um, and to approve them. So on the agenda, 3.1 is the school board summer retreats, parts one and two, the minutes, July 24th and August 1st, 2024. Uh, 3.2, school board meeting, public and non-public meeting minutes from August 27th, 2024. And 3.3, our enrollment report, September, as of September 1st, 2024. I think if I, um, their enrollment, total enrollment for our district was about 1,327, um, 1,327 students. So what is the wish of the board to approve the consent calendar as presented? I motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Do a second? Second. Okay, any discussion about any of these items on the consent calendar? The minutes or enrollment? Okay, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Perfect, the consent calendar is adopted. Moving to agenda item four, uh, our reports. We don't have any student representatives, but we will at our next meeting on the 24th, so we'll move to um, agenda 4.2, our superintendent's report, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and a reminder, the student reports will be the second board meeting of each month, so they start on September 24th, and then they'll continue every other board meeting, basically, at the tail end of the month. Um, enrollment report, um, Chair Larson mentioned, we've got 1,327, uh, 1,327 kids enrolled as of September 1st. That number uh, did not have everybody logged in, and it's increasing as we speak. And I want to note, uh, if you look at that list, it has got kindergarten at 112 um, on September 1st. Uh, it was 117 <laughs> as of yesterday. Um, and I, I want to point that out. Preschool is going to go up into the 40s, we expect, as well. This is a matter of just kind of processing enrollments. And we do have a fair number of students uh, come in right at the start of the school year, particularly in the lower grades. Um, so we'll get you a better picture of enrollment at the next school board meeting. Um, start of the school year, um, by all accounts, from uh, everybody I talk to in each of the buildings, to parents I talk to, um, to those of us in the SAU office that were out and about, school board members I know were out and about, particularly on the first couple of days. Heard from a few students directly, heard from a lot of parents, um, heard from a few folks outside of the community as well that uh, the school year had a real good start, uh, felt really good, felt very positive, good energy. Um, buses are always a little bit late at the very beginning, but they got on schedule pretty quickly, um, Idlehurst included. We were pretty responsive to some uh, parents that needed uh, bus stop changes. We, we do that when we can, we can't always. Um, Unfortunately, we also uh, have a handful each year of parents requesting to start kindergarten um, early because they've just missed the birthday cutoff. And just as a universal policy, both uh, for the sake of the district and for everybody involved, we simply hold firm on that date. And it's just kind of good to, re to recommunicate that by board policy. Um, and the tech was good. Um, uh, New View has done a really good job. Um, Chad uh, Linez, our uh, Help desk guy was busy, but getting things done. So overall, we were really happy about that. We have a teacher workshop day tomorrow, and some of the more tech, some of the more, um, some more of the tech stuff will be rolling out, uh, including two-factor authentication, which is necessary when a staff member logs on uh, to their device in a new browser, a new computer. And this one's going to be a little bit complicated because it requires that you have your personal cell phone with you at the time. And so we're going to work that through with faculty and staff and uh, the teachers unions as well, just to make sure um, we've got an appropriate way of, of moving forward on that. But overall, um, things, things felt really good to start a school year. Uh, again, enrollment update uh, next time will mean a little bit more. Staffing, we're still short para educators. Um, it seems that that's perpetual, um, but we're doing our best to fill spots even now. 
Um, we've had a special education position open uh, since the summer, and we're probably going to need to move to a plan B on that one and hopefully find somebody um, next spring going into next year, but we haven't given up yet. And based on the kindergarten enrollment numbers, as you see further on the agenda, um, we do need to add another kindergarten teacher even at this late point in the game. Um, and we'll talk more about that under 8.1. Um, cell phones in the high school, among the things that have gone well here at the start of the school year. Um, just a reminder to everybody, I think school board members know, but for the folks that are watching at home, this is a national issue, not a Summersworth issue. Um, state, several states have actually basically uh, banned uh, cell phones in schools. Um, many districts, large districts, have moved in that direction too. What the high school's done is essentially, and it's been communicated really well to parents and to kids, I think they've done a very good job, is to simply get a lot stricter than we have been about no cell phones um, out or in use in classroom settings. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I, I was among the school principals 15 years ago that were trying to find that balance between letting young people be adults and learn how to use these things properly. Um, and I think at this point we now know the addictive nature and the health, you know, mental health uh, uh, problems associated with phones. So we're probably going to need to revisit this one as a community. This can't be something that the high school administration or the middle school administration tackle on their own, let alone Maplewood um, as it seeps further down. Um, but overall, they got off to a really good start. Uh, I've heard it said uh, numerous times that our, our kids are pretty good about this kind of stuff. Respectful, um, diligent, not perfect, but uh, pretty good about these things. Um, and lastly, not lastly, um, superintendent uh, form, I discussed with board chair that uh, over the next three or four weeks, I'm gonna schedule maybe three different times to meet with parents and community members, maybe host one at Idlehurst maybe host one at the high school, maybe host one downtown um, at the, the, the hall across the street or here or wherever. Just uh, nobody should come to all three unless that's <laughs> a, But just to make it, uh, you know, do a, an evening, uh, a weekend, a, a weekday, just to reach as many parents and families as possible. And I'd like to do no more than half of the talking and mostly just listen to what folks want to tell me about Summersworth and about our schools and our communities. As soon as those are scheduled, I post them. I imagine school board members um, and others would like to um, join in, although the point will be to listen. Um, so those will be coming um, shortly. Uh, Teamsters first student talks um, are tomorrow and um, today's Monday, so tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, if we do unfortunately have a uh, impasse and a strike, uh, chances are it would fall later this week or next week. Um, we're keeping our fingers crossed on that one. Um, and we will keep everybody posted as we go, but we'll basically pull together as a community and do what we have to if we should lose um, our buses for some period of time. Um, Summersworth Middle School, we discussed, I think, two board meetings ago in the transition uh, from the Summersworth Youth Connection to the uh, before care uh, and after care program that the Y is offering, uh, continuing educational enrichment and uh, other activities after school for middle school students. Um, that slipped out, you know, we knew that was happening, but that we, we lost those. Um, Kat and I met with uh, Jim Lampron and Jen Spector earlier in the summer, and. Jim and Jen have been doing a wonderful job of strategizing ways to kind of get this uh, established, including some potential savings and moving things around within their budget to make this a priority. Um, and I've sat with Katie and we've kind of looked at what we've got budgeted this year about the possibility of finding some money um, to, to make that work sooner rather than later, like within the next few weeks. But we'll, uh, we'll be looking at that and keeping you posted shortly. Um, and maybe the places uh, Mr. Lampron found the money in the middle school we can put back and, uh, and still augment because I think it would be a good argument um, not to lose anything that they're already doing. Um, and then lastly, just a reminder that uh, SAU 56 um, has contracted central office services uh, with the Rollinsford School District now for several years. Uh, we're in a five-year agreement that ends this year. Um, Although there's a commitment, so not to leave any other if the school district out there, that really um, it's Rollinsford's prerogative, uh, not ours, um, but the terms of the agreement have to be negotiated together. Um, so we're going to be beginning those talks uh, soon, just as a reminder that that's happening. And I think that's 
Oh, I'm going to share this, although it'll be shared in better ways, but you should hear about it right away. Steve Hodston, just learned this afternoon, um, was just announced that he is the NHIA Division Three. 2023-2024 Athletic Director of the Year. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Um, so we will properly recognize him, yeah, um, uh, at, at a, yeah. We got Coach of the Year. Yet another accolade of Coach, coach of, of the Year. year. This, was, this was just out today, so maybe just it's another yeah. one, yeah. wow. So it might have been a different year. So um, yeah, we will, uh, I look forward to properly inviting him here and recognizing him um, in other ways as well, but he does a phenomenal job. Um, okay. And that's it for superintendent report. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Questions, board. All right. Moving along to um, 4.3, our business administrators report. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. So I'm going to do two separate things. The first one, I'm going to start with last year's end of year um, report, and then I'll move on to my regular budget uh, business administrator report. Um, so in your packet is a budget update as of June 30th. Um, we had a total expenditure balance of just over $424,000. Um, total unanticipated revenue of just over $36,000. And then, if you remember, when we did our budget, we used our fund balance from FY23 to fund the budget of 100000 um, So we, because we had an expenditure balance, we didn't need to utilize that. So in total, we'll be returning $561,000 to the city of Summersworth. Um, the expenditure balance is due in large part to savings and salaries and benefits. We had quite a few, as you know, para openings all year last year. Plus, we had two significant savings and out-of-district placements for two placements. One was, I think, over like 300000 The other was like probably 150000 So there was significant savings as one moved out of district and the other one never got placed during the year. Um, for revenue, we really tried um, last year, and we built the budget to bring the revenue in line so that we didn't have a lot of unanticipated revenue. So 36000 is really bringing that in so we can utilize that revenue as we budget. Um, the additional revenue was mostly to Medicaid reimbursement, special education aid, and tuition from preschool. We had other areas that didn't quite come in as we expected, so the overages in the other areas were able to fund those other areas that we didn't get. Um, all the end of year DOE 25 reports have been submitted. Um, once they're approved, um, the funds will be returned to the city of Summersworth, and then the city determines how they utilize the funds. Previous years, portions have um, been used to offset the tax rate. Um, the tax rate gets set in October or November, so um, once that's set, we can report back out how that was utilized. Again, these are unaudited, so once the audit's complete, I'll let you know if there were any major changes. So are there any questions on that section of the report? Any questions on the money left over? Yep. Board Member Brown? No, I just have a question. When you mentioned the audit, what kind of a cycle are we on for audit? I just we, we get audited know. every year. It's once a year. Oh, so it's every every month. fiscal okay. year. Yep. So they're coming in November. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So Daddy? Has the city ever given the school district back the money that the school district gave? The yeah, city? so that hundred thousand that I referenced at the yeah. top, we have that option every year when we're creating our budget to um, utilize end of year. If we if we think we're going to have some, we can use that um, to build our budget into next year. So um, we have to do that during the budget process. Oh, okay, but has the city ever given us the entirety of whatever we may be have extra? Have they ever given it all back? Am I asking the right question? So let me see. So being here this long, so it's it's what we haven't expended. So per the charter and per what would what we have to do is return it to the city. Now that we've done that for millions of dollars over the last five years, millions of dollars has been returned from the school budget, unexpended funds. We've never been due to like wonderful bookkeeping and budgeting under right we've been close and it's been a fine line but so this 560,000 automatically goes to because we can't use it for anything we haven't budgeted for is that it well you can yeah I mean you can at the end of every year like April I'll come to you and I'll say these are some items we want to get done we came with the tech money that's we did that but everything gets returned we can't save it unless we use it as part of our budget process and budget for I, yeah, it. I guess I was more saying after we return it, has the city ever decided that that budget actually, that that money could come back? 
that's not a not only time. during budget time. Like I said, we can say we'd like to utilize it Got for it. next and uh, build it in as revenue for the following year. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Yeah. Board Member Wentworth. Um, and I just want to ask a question, and I feel like I know the answer already. And we talked about this before, but the fund balance can only be a hundred thousand dollars. That we have a you can choose to utilize any amount of money you want. However, you have to be careful because whatever amount you use going into next year's budget, you have to. It's okay. automatically a reduction the following year because if you don't think you're going to have it. So if you use a lot of money and you don't have it the following year, that's an automatic reduction in your revenue. Right. Which okay. you then have to make up on the expense side. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Um, the option of deciding what to use it for, if it goes back to the fund balance or if it's used to offset taxes, an amount like $560,000, um, not to put you on the spot, but would you have a gen general idea of how that could impact the tax rate, percent, like per what the cents are? Because when we make the budget, which is um, not ideal, we always, we've been historically looking at, okay, this much will in increase it by a cent amount mm -hmm. um, and it hasn't oh it, it's never been exactly that at mm -hmm. the end so there's a lot of talk about our tax rate currently in Summersworth and kind of like a an equation of what what it actually is so um, that amount like a, each hundred thousand dollars it's usually around 10 cents, I want to say, 8 to okay. 10 cents, but I don't like, quote me on that. No, I think it is <laughs> Plus, about with cents. all the revaluation and everything going on, I don't know how this is going to factor right. into but, the tax rate. Yeah, historically, when if they used it to offset taxes, it would be $560,000 would be about 50 cents. 50 cents, cents. probably, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, generally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in theory, just like we shouldn't depend on that money going forward, the city should not depend on the school the board giving money back Correct. to them. So it go goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with the, the general fund for the city, um, if I remember, is healthy, is a healthy fund, and that has gone, you know, each year, you know, us going so diligently. I mean, this is not easy to do because it's a couple of things. It's having an impact on our kids because we haven't been able to provide services, which is – you know, needed throughout, you know, it's not a budgeting thing. It's being able to get personnel and people on board because it is salary and then being able to understand and there's flux with, um, especially with our special ed, um, you know, students and our requirements, we don't always know. So we've never been negative in this and it is so delicate because we could be, we could have students that can't come into Summersworth that have such needs that we're required to out of play, have placements, have paraprofessionals, have nurses and things like that. So kudos to everyone that works with it, in it because mm -hmm. it's not that that's an ask, but again, historically we have never been low, but we have contributed healthily to the general fund balance because we've been doing work, but it does have impact, right? You're like it's not just that we're saving to save, there's just other things involved, yep. I can't remember. The the amount last year and then the amount before. She'll have to I, I don't know off the top of okay. my head, but it was a lot because during I COVID times, if you remember, it was we million. we weren't like just we weren't year, spending two money. Years so ago, it yep. was one yeah. point nine, but I can't remember last. A year. lot of that was revenue though, and again, we can't spend the revenue. And we have to that automatically goes back unless we were to request to use the revenue. So right. board member Jameson. Yeah. No. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, All just right. switching gears yes, back to my report. Um, so for the f current fiscal year's budget, I'm still working on encumbering all the staff benefits and salaries for the, all the staff changes. So you'll have an update for the current year in your next bud uh, board packet. Um, in terms of revenue for the current year, so um, we get, as you know, um, most of our revenue comes from the state of New Hampshire for our adequacy, along with taxes, is our biggest revenue sources. Um, each year when we build our budget, we're given an estimate from the state of what we expect to receive for adequacy. And then in September, after all of the end of year reporting is done for our enrollments and our um, uh, attendance for students, it's revised and they give us an actual number of what we're going to receive. Um, so we received that on August 27th, so we're going to be getting an additional $262,000 um, in inadequacy. So there's two options for um, districts when that happens. Um, for us, because we're a city, we're in a unique position because 
towns can only request this additional money if it's due to stat statutory changes. There were no statutory changes. It was just changes in our enrollment in different areas. So towns can't go and ask for this money, but because we're a city and we don't have to go to the citizens to ask for the funds and we only have to have council approve, we are able to go and request these funds. Um, so that has to happen through a supplemental appropriation request to the city council. Um, so the budget and revenue committee is going to meet next week, um, and John and I will be bringing a recommendation um, to come forward and request a supplemental appropriation um, so that we can utilize these funds. Um, okay, great. Any questions? Or and I have one more thing. One more, okay. um, so in terms of food service, the application for food service has been submitted and approved by the Department of Ed. Um, we have been notified that we're receiving our fresh fruit and vegetable program again this year for both Idlehurst and Maplewood. So we're getting 24975 from Maplewood and 28425 for Idlehurst. And then um, we've been busy processing all the free and reduced applications in our office. Um, to date, um, we've processed 156 paper or online applications and 290 direct certifications from the state. Um, so just a reminder to families to please get those forms in. Um, October 1st is the data that the state uses for our funding, so it's really important that families get those forms in so that we can process them and get them accounted for for our revenue. Board member Jameson. Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, is it accurate to say that families should fill out free and reduced lunch applications even if they don't think they might qualify because of the funding? Yes, they should. Even if they don't, I mean, they should. Yeah, it's always best. Yep, board member Brown. I just, uh, Katie, I had a, I was trying to follow along on the sheets that you provided in our packet on the amount. Was it 262 that we are asking for? For the, yes. Okay. Thank you. I just yep. want to make sure I had it right. Thanks. Yep. Okay. And do we have a um, once everything's kind of um, processed, can we get a percentage of our free and reduced? For yeah, that year? won't. Ha the state will release it, but it doesn't happen for a little while because it will ha happen after October one. All of the um, beginning of year data is collected. Okay. Great. Later on. Yeah. Uh, yep. Clark. And then what more? So a quick question with uh, free and reduced. Can we use any of that to two hundred and sixty-two thousand? to give all of our students free lunches? It, it, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're trying to come up with a way to help with that, but yeah. okay. Board member Wentworth? I don't know if this is going back or still staying with that. Sorry, Katie. Okay. Um, so the on the, the I, looking at the budget, the adopted budget, uh, 5121 is transfer to food service. Mm -hmm. That was 38 and change and so is that where we spent all year those are your negative balances okay so we budget 30,000 every year to cover those balances that families do not pay that's well, that's gotcha. what the amount so, was that, so that is not the cost N absolutely not no <laughs> Wait, I yes. was quite alarmed so yeah. <laughs> thank you yes yeah we can't what's the word not default on our payment to fresh pick so we have to pay what is all the overdue balances in the school system. So for $3.10 for high school, 270 times whatever, I, I mean, I'm not sure, I can't do the math actually, for how many lunches and breakfasts that, it, that, that is, but that's 38,000 for cost. So this isn't for free and reduced no. or free, free. No. Um, it, it be, because it wouldn't be able to add up to that. Um, a reduced cost meal, do we know, Katie, uh, approximately what that, what that reduced is? Reduced is 40 cents. So 40 cents, yeah. So 40 cents are free, I'm not sure, you know. So so 40 cents for reduced, free is free, you know, breakfast, lunch. Um, yep, do you have a question too? No, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 you have another one? Yep, go ahead, yeah, that's all right. It's forever, I'm so sorry. Um, so do we happen to know what portion of that, and this may be a ridiculous question, but what portion of that 38,000 is the free and reduced? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it, free and reduced lunch is like 40 cents. And how many of that is like not even made by the 40 cents? Does that make sense? Does that question make no, sense? No. Or no? So how many students that qualify for reduced Still had a negative balance to the negative balance. To I don't that know degree. that. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I, oh. I can get it for you. Oh no, I was just I was just wondering if that 
one. Yeah. It's mostly families that don't qualify. But. So 40, 40 cents to equal. Or haven't filled out the forms. Yeah. Or yeah, haven't filled out the forms. 40 cents to equal $38,000 real quick was 95000 So I'm not sure if that came. Okay. okay. Yeah, just quick math. All right, anyone else? Any other questions? Thank you, Katie, for all of Welcome. that. There's more coming at the end of the month. Um, great. Agenda item 4.4, there's no city council update today. Uh, 4.5 uh, board chair report, which is quick and just this one page for the recovery friendly workplace. The long history short, uh, years ago, up uh, three years ago, uh, the Mental Health Commission, it was a joint board between the city and the school board. Um, Todd Marsh and I were the representatives on the school board side. And at the end of that commission, um, leaning we decided as a city and as a school to become designated recovery friendly workplaces now the city declared i think in 2023 december of 2023 if i remember um so they've been uh declared recovery friendly workplace or designated recovery friendly workplace since then so every department of the city so today as just wanted i i i took a you know, I I took my, I did my best effort of what I understand and what I wanted to put forward without deciding and having this be deliberative today because it can be further and putting it out into the public record. I made a statement or a declaration from the board side that, you know, the district side. Um, and I gave you all a copy and I'm just going to read it out um, aloud today and then welcome feedback from the public and welcome feedback overall. All right, and I will start in quote. At SAU 56, <clears throat> we recognize that substance use disorder affects many in our community, including our staff, students, and their families. As educators and community leaders, we believe in the power of knowledge and dialogue to create positive change and reduce stigma. We join the city of Summersworth in our declaration of being a recovery-friendly workplace and our initiative aims to one, provide education to our staff, students, and families as appropriate about sub substance use disorder, recovery, and available support services. Two, reduce stigma through open, compassionate, and well-informed discussion about substance use disorders. Three, support the overall health and wellness of our school community, recognizing that recovery is part of a broader commitment to well-being. Four, Collaborate with local recovery organizations and healthcare providers to ensure access to update to up to date information and resources for our school community. Five, contribute to a more inclusive school community that acknowledges and supports those impacted by substance use disorder. We believe that becoming a recovery friendly workplace, we can create a healthier, more productive and supportive environment for all members of our school community. This initiative aligns with our values of education, inclusion and community support. There will be no policy changes as we maintain our commitment to a drug free workplace and prioritize staff and student safety. Our goal is to create a culture of mutual respect, understanding and support while upholding our responsibility to maintain a safe and productive learning and working environment for all, end quote. So putting that on our record um, at our next board meeting on the 24th, uh, I'd like to, you know, to invite our recovery friendly workplace advisors and director, as well as the governor's office, um, Governor Sununu and the governor candidates um, that have all had interest in this and have known that Summersworth would be looking into this joint city and school declaration of support. Um, so I welcome feedback, not really a deliberation of sorts, but I welcome feedback now, later, at any time. Yep, Board Member Clark. So I know that you and I spoke a little bit before this um, happened, and I, I remember, I, I, at first I wanted to say publicly that I I agree with the process of this and I, I agree with the education piece and the stigma and support for overall health where I'm confused on um, was that we had a committee meeting I think Gemma was there I think that you were there we had some um, 
administrators there that were talking about like how does this impact the schools and I know that you said that it doesn't affect the policies but then they had questions that were never answered and I feel like that's where I keep like faltering on this currently is that we never got the questions answered that the administration had or that we had we never heard and so um and so all of a sudden see it being a you know a, a declaration up from the board is a little bit hard for us when we weren't given the information that we needed to make the declaration like we weren't part of that so I guess I'm, I'm just confused on like how this was Any pushed through. Any information that's needed or requested, um, if I can just put John in, on there, John and I will be able to Because we had, us. who was that lady that was there? That was the, our workplace, recovery. Uh, Ellie Mason, our the yeah. workplace friendly advisor for the. Yeah. So I know they had all kinds of questions. Administration had questions and like how to roll this out and then all of a sudden have it be so a declaration. So there really wouldn't be a any specific rollout sure. just like the city there wasn't a specific rollout other than being kind of awarded and supported at the federal and state level with mm. resources that we would need so we and don't really saying, do this as a political body because we're not a political body and we're right. nonpartisan. it's kind of more of a um this is the time because it's not being declared mm -hmm. to get feedback and to get questions and to kind of get that out there publicly because we haven't had we had committee meetings right about it but i you know it hasn't been kind of out there for the public so we're for waiting anyone. for a question we're waiting for questions to be answered and they were never answered what was your question so, well we can go back to our minutes and look through all the questions that all the administrations had about like how this would impact because it puts them at a tricky situation you know we say that we're going to be supportive but then we're like you know don't come to me but come to me like, but don't come to me because if you come to me, you're going to lose your job. And that's part of the policy. And I think there was questions. Over, that's, I just want to make sure that we're not being two-faced. Like, we're going to be supportive, but not really supportive. So, it's, it's, so, again, like, we can't tell, like, employees how, like, we, from this, it'll be kind of in the sent to the superintendent to be able to, like, get the details of how the schools are run. Right. For us, it's kind of, are these values important to us as a body? rather than telling kind of it, the schools how to run specifically. So right. it's more of like, you know, 40,000 foot school board site and what we value. And then from Superintendent Shea's end and every and an administration and educators and everyone else staff will say, OK, like there may be questions. But again, like we're in the thousands of other other recovery friendly workplaces around the state. We are. We will be a school district that is. It doesn't change how we operate. It can't change how we operate. It'll be more. This is a declaration. So we've had many declarations in the past that maybe we haven't solicited feedback from city side, federal, state. It just happens. This is happening. Kind of putting it out there on the record publicly. It's a declaration. Right. I'll be interested to see yeah. what the administration yeah. says too. I kind of I'm curious what they had okay. thoughts. Oh, yeah, can you just wait one for Superintendent Shea? Is is it response? Okay. Um, I was just going to offer the perspective. Um, you know, as a superintendent or as a building principal, um, what we always want to do in terms of staffing is hire the best person available for the job. And if that person has a disability and is in a wheelchair. We want to make sure that we're a school that is wheelchair accessible so we can bring in a phenomenal teacher who would otherwise, you know, and you can think of a long list of things over the past decades that we've discriminated against. Um, so part of its value, but on a, like on a basic, you know, let's fill every spot with the best human being available. And that might be somebody that doesn't currently have certification. So we have alternative certification pass or, we, or we're set up for uh, handicap accessibility. Uh, this to me kind of fits in that category where it happens to be a really phenomenally qualified person who is in recovery who can feel that they are, you know, not discriminated against because of that and would be supported the way the same way anybody else would be in the school, I think is kind of the, the, the business side of this that makes sense to me. Um, always hire the best person for the position regardless uh, and be prepared to, to, to work with them in whatever ways we need to. I like the values piece of it as well, but that's kind of how I look at it. Board Member Jameson. 
Um, so Carrie, I won't like directly respond to your thoughts because I, you know, to some extent, I don't know how you roll something like this out, and I think that that's. Um, a oh, I'm sorry. I think so. I'm not responding directly to you because I uh, to. I really don't know how you roll something like this out. I think it's at the discretion of the um, superintendent. Um, but it does say no policy changes. And I also view this, um, at least from my like mental health perspective, um, as, a, as a step away from this um, kind of one-sided approach that we've had, which is basically that drugs are bad, which they are, <laughs> um, but also that like we don't do anything or touch anything with mental health and that there are these two fully separate things. And I think that this statement really looks at marrying the two, which is so needed in schools right now, um, of how to help students and staff and anyone make um, healthy coping choices that, that don't involve drug use. Um, Wentworth and then Clark just to give everyone that. Okay. Um, so I, I can't, okay, I'm not going to try and reread the statement. Um, I think for me, um, part of what this helps t to do is erase some of that stigma. Um, it's not a policy change. It's not that, um, you know, you can kind of come to work under the influence or anything like that. But it is saying that um, it's having a conversation um, about, in my, in my eyes, um, mental health issues um, or uh, recovery is that it's part of our language. It's part of something that is not to be shameful, not to be hidden. Um, and so what that looks like to me is not anything interacting necessarily differently, but more of a, um, different conversation of the, like, oh yeah, you know, my, my dad it has been in recovery for five years, but it's been really hard on me kind of thing. Like people are feeling free to have those conversations, I guess. Um, and as it, having just a non-discriminatory feel to people. Um, I don't, I can't put my finger on it like bunches of tangible changes. To me, it's more that of, um, that this doesn't have to be hidden, that this is to be spoken about. Um, it, and, and that I don't know that this isn't the Me Too movement, but it's, you know, it's, it's starting this conversation of, of that it's not in the dark, it's not in a closet anymore. Um, and so that's kind of how I'm viewing all of this. Um, and that's just my personal values. And it's certainly... I, I, I think it is, um, I think it's really valuable to our students. I, I look more at, I get that it's recovery friendly workplace, but I'm looking at it more from the student family, uh, extended family, that kind of venue. I, I don't know. So that's, that's kind of how I interpret it. Okay. Remember Clark and then Soldati? So I just wanted to make it crystal clear that I 100% agree that this is super important. Like we want the education piece. We want people to feel supported. We want all of that. What my, and I think there was confusion, was that I'm not saying this is wrong or we don't want to go forward, but that we just had questions that were never answered. And I guess that's where my type A personality was like, wait, I had questions that were answered and they had questions that were answered and, and now here we are. Do I think this is a, a great initiative? I do. I think it's, we need to have it. And I don't want to be branded as a person that doesn't accept this because I do accept it. Um, but I just want to make sure that, you know, the people that had questions get those questions answered. And I would stand on the hilltop for anyone that had questions that didn't get answered. Absolutely you know for anything and but and, and this is the opportunity right. to do it so and it went as more of a bigger bigger net casting a larger net to the community to the public and everything so, so i just want to make sure i'm crystal clear like yes i agree like like we want to support people in recovery we want people to feel like you know they have a place an avenue to go and you know but i just want to make sure that you know also 
if we have questions, yeah. they will not be slighted or slid under and ignored, and we will get those answered. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. it. Uh, yep, so that. Yeah. Um, firstly, I also am in support of this declaration moving forward. Um, but yeah, uh, to answer your point um, about the committee meeting we sat on, my I can't speak to anyone else's feelings about the meeting, but my recollection was the main concerns were particularly of, of members of staff of the school district, that they wanted to make sure that their pol that, that policy would not be changed so that their jobs in terms of following protocol, following HR directives, following standard practices for how you deal with incidences or et cetera, would not be affected by this. Separate from that, I do remember a conversation in that meeting about that there's a current program at the high school. I can't remember the exact name. I believe it's called like Live Free in yeah. Recovery. And that there was a, some conversation about how actually in many ways this goes very much in line with what is already being done for the students. And so that if these conversations are happening with students, it actually really helps to bridge the gap with um, faculty and staff being able to have those conversations as well, again, from the sort of more stigma, destigmatizing and providing new language. Um, but again, I agree that if there are questions, and for me, it seems particularly from staff members who have to be the ones sort of standing behind the sticker that says we're friendly, obviously they need to know and feel empowered with whatever that means for them. But my takeaway from that meeting was so long as there were no policies or protocols being changed around employment um, that that everyone ultimately from a values perspective was on board and, and, and uh, interested in engaging with this plan. Great, okay. So please um, share this feedback, um, John, me, both of us, um, kind of just wanted to level set it to put it out there to be able to see to go forward with this now, now you know, writing this, it's um, <clears throat> we know our community. I think it's one of those things to start a conversation. I think that's one of the things that, that it doesn't get worse through conversation and dialogue. And I think that's important. There's it's it's needed that com those conversations are needed. But concerns, questions, please, this is the time. Um, it's not that going to be changed. There's no rush. Um, it is National um, Recovery Month and um, kind of wanted to just kind of get it back out into the atmosphere. All right, for that, moving to agenda item number five, committee reports, our standing re committees, um, budget and revenue. Um, there'll be a report on the 24th of this month. Building grounds and um, transportation committee. I believe there are um, meetings coming up on the 24th? On the tw right before the board meeting, okay, all right. Uh, Ed programs and community outreach. Um, yeah, O'Brien Hart is the chair, but on the 24th as well. Okay, right before the board meeting. Okay, we'll get those. I believe it's the 23rd. 23rd, which is Monday? Yeah. Okay. Monday the 23rd, 5.30? 4.30. Where? The SAU. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank I you. I might have just decided. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Perfect. We'll clear, we'll clear it all out. We'll clear it out. out. Um, all right. Policy committee. I do believe we have an update. Board member Brown. I'm the new chair. Yeah. <laughs> I miss Susan already. Uh, we had our, our first meeting, and I'm referring to Susan Tierney, um, who was the former chair. A um, lot of work. So we had our first meeting on September 4th. Our next meeting is in the agenda packet and it is on um, September 24th and we hold our meetings at usually 545 at, at the SAU office. And so over the summer, um, our the law firm that advises the, uh, the school board or our, our board, and also the New Hampshire um, School Boards Association list out all of the federal statutes that have changed, regulations that have changed, and the state statutes and regulations that have changed, and they give us a to-do list as we commence our September meetings on policy. And so over the summer, there were many things that affected our policies, but in particular, 
there was a policy AC, and I'll read the titles in a minute, um, ACE and then ACAC, which pertained to Title IX, and, which is a federal uh, uh, Department of Ed uh, discrimination uh, statute. And since we get federal dollars, it applies to us. So that law had gone, going into effect August 1 ne meant that we needed to pounce on these three policies as quickly as possible. I on our uh, September 4th meeting, we got through two of them, not the third one. So that, that third one will be coming in, the, in another meeting. Um, so to orient people to these policies, if you go to the SAU 56 website under uh, 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 school board uh, school board policies, you will see section A through L. And so when you hear us go, well, policy ACAC or ACE-E or dash R, we didn't make that up. The mm -hmm. New Hampshire School Board Association has grouped subjects A through L and within that, they have chosen an alphabetical order rather, they, rather than a numeric order of these policies. So Section A concerns foundations and basic commitments. And within Section A, we have Policy AA, which is school district legal status, ABA, volunteer involvement, et cetera. So with respect to Policy AC, which is on for first reading later today. Um, the title is Non-Discrimination, Equal Opportunity Employment, and District Anti-Discrimination Plan. We've had that policy in effect, uh, let's see, going back to 2000. It has been revised, and the revisions changed definitions. They got rid of the human rights officer. Suffice to say, it was better to not track change it, but just to get rid of it. A lot of the policies from the old version are in the new version, so in our packet, that's why you see a completely red uh, version, which is just all new, new language. So we will be, um, yeah, this one went into effect August, uh, August 1st and uh, removed the, um, the human rights officer language and um, the companion to AC is then the ACE, which is now named AC-R2 because there were two versions that the New Hampshire School Board Association put out. And that one is the annual notice. So kind of like if you're an employer and you go to the employee notice board, there's a notice, um, the, like EEOC notice. We have a notice for our AC policy, and that notice form is AC, um, now going to be AC-R. So it just is a posting notifying. We've got the Title IX coordinator is none other than Kat Crosby, and we have our 504 coordinator is now Leander Corman. And so, and it lists um, outside agencies. So it's a very simple policy. Oh, um, real quick. Yep. The policy AC-E, is that still going to be existent? Are we, rem are we withdrawing that to be updated? We will, we will need to withdraw it. Okay. We have in its place, and let me back up. Mm -hmm. The preference is to have our policies mirror in that alphabetical yep. rubric, yep. the New Hampshire School Boards Association, so we can keep track of them. And so we will be renaming that um, AC-E to be AC-R uh -huh. parentheses 2. In the meantime, if we can look up ACE, it is outdated. And we should not have this information out there as, as such. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be working on that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just because to have a personnel be up there so whatever you think is best to kind of not have this be present just because it's not a it's not a deliberation of the board when we have um, old personnel on something 
I would make the recommendation to remove or strike through that because it's not, a, again, it's not a deliberation of the board. We should just update personnel as it is so it doesn't get confusing if it's in two separate places. So this is AC-E. Okay. Thank yep. you for that. And my, I, I appreciate that, that, that comment because we don't want to have our, our website have stale information. So thank you very much for pointing that out because our intent is um, with the AC-R parentheses two to have the accurate information. Um, but anyway, that's my explanation of the policies, um, AC, which was non-discrimination, equal opportunity employment, and district anti-discrimination plan, and then AC-E, which is now R, which is the annual notice of the contact information for the Title IX coordinator and the 504 coordinator and, and other civil rights agencies. Great. So thank you very much for letting me at least keep Absolutely. And the next meeting we'll go over policy ACAC and they'll in, in, in your packet there are other policies. So at this juncture for policy, board members, community members can all make recommendations to the policy chair, board member Brown, what policies they'd like to see updated. Um, but we're kind of going with the, the um, required by law ones at first. Absolutely, yep. it's because we got quite the to-do list over the summer. It's a lot of, of our work. law firm and courtesy yep. of New Hampshire School Board. Um, I'm very grateful that we have those two resources so we know at least what to start with yes. for policies. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, agenda item 5E, um, e, Eyes on 30 Committee Board Liaison. Do we have an update? No update. All right. So we do not have a presentation this evening. So moving th straight into agenda item number seven, policy adoption. Um, we have two policies for first reading. Um, typically, we do need the motion to read by title only. Otherwise, it would be writ read I in its entirely. I okay. to read by title only. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Any discussion about that? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, Go ahead, Board Member Brown, 7.1. I have too many windows open on my first. computer. Okay, um, our first policy, AC. The title is Non-Discrimination, Equal Opportunity Employment, and District Anti-Discrimination Plans, Plan, rather. Okay. All right, going to agenda item 7.2. By title only, please. Policy AC-R, parentheses two, non-discrimination, equal opportunity employment and anti-discrimination plan, annual notice of contact information. Okay, perfect. So these are both for, on a first reading. They'll be on a second reading for adoption on our 24th board, board meeting, and we'll probably have more for first reading as well on our... Um, on our meeting on the 24th. All right, our new business this evening is 8.1, a proposed addition of a sixth kindergarten classroom teacher. Um, Superintendent Shea. Thank you. Uh, on policy, just quickly, because I noticed Policy Committee Chair Brown uh, going to the website looking like it looked new. Just for everybody's information, uh, we are reorienting the website a bit, and it'll always be functional at any particular time, but it's probably going to continue to change a little bit. Over the next week or two, it was about three or four non-intuitive clicks to get to school board policies on the old website. It is now two intuitive clicks to get to school board. School board's at the top and policies underneath it. At least I think that's what you're looking at. So it's not change. It's just basic stuff, but just making it simpler and easier to use before we heard from committee mem community members that were concerned about uh, ease, but we're just trying to tighten things up a little bit. Um, and I also just want to make sure um, everybody's clear that uh, there are no school boards that updated their policies on August 2nd in line with the August 1st federal law, and the federal law dictates uh, how we operate. So we, we catch up with our board policies, but it's the federal law that's in effect now for Title IX regardless of our board policies, so it's nice that we're getting them in line. Um, the um, Item 8.1, I uh, already spoke to Board Chair Larson about this. Um, the kindergarten classroom teachers uh, in late June as well as the Idlehurst Elementary School principal Liza Coco and assistant principal Kate Gove told us that the 100 or so students enrolled in kindergarten in five classrooms was not going to be the number we ended up at come the start of the school year. Um, and at that point, we, you know, I met with uh, Assistant Superintendent Crosby and I asked Kat, I said, you focus on doing everything we can to support the, the five classroom kindergarten setup. 
um, and at, at such time where we realize we just simply because of enrollment or other issues need another classroom, um, it would be my responsibility to bring that to the board and work with Katie to figure out if there's a way to do that. Um, so we went from 100 kindergarten classrooms, and, and I want to back up for a second. There's students, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That'd be easy. Really, yeah. That'd be easy. <laughs> one student in each class <laughs> with one teacher and one That's para. Great. They are going to rock. Um, the, uh, sorry about that. Um, we started out with 100 uh, kindergartners in five classrooms, each with a teacher, each with a para dedicated to that classroom. Um, we struggle with paras overall where a one-on-one -on -one is needed, but we're doing our best to address kindergarten needs. The, the, the bigger issue here is that the kindergartners right now were newborns two, three years old in the pandemic. Um, so nationally, we are still seeing, we talk a lot about what this meant for middle schoolers. We talk about a lot what this meant for kids in school. We are hopefully at the beginnings of the end of the wave of preschoolers coming into kindergarten having endured the pandemic and what that meant, particularly for families with uh, fewer resources that weren't able to do the enrichment and other things that families with greater resources might have been able to do. Um, so kindergarten's been messy for a couple years now, and it'll probably be particularly messy for another year. And kindergarten and preschool, as everybody in, uh, in this room knows, are pretty much sacred foundational years. It, this is what this is what it's going to look like at the rest of Idlehurst. This is what Maplewood's going to look like in a few years. This is what the middle school is going to look at in a few years. So um, the fact is, we're, I think we're right at 117 as of yesterday. So those five classrooms of 20, which was really pretty much the outer limits of where we ought to be. Forget any policies. A good educator would tell you we kind of want to be 16, 18-ish with a teacher, a, 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 a dedicated teacher's aide and the appropriate paras. So now we're looking at 23, 24 per classroom. Um, I talked to uh, Chair Larson early on, talked with Katie. Um, Kat spent some time over in the classrooms as well. So we pretty much have universal slam dunk agreement that this can't, this won't work. Um, we have a space, we can reconfigure some things so that we can add a sixth classroom. It's not particularly easy to find a kindergarten teacher this time of year. We've started already, um, but we've got a couple of candidates um, that we're hopeful about, um, and we've got space that's ready. We know that's a disruption to families that have already started. They're in their classrooms already, so we want to do it quicker, not slower, and we will over-communicate to all the families that are impacted, and I hope they all appreciate that class sizes of 18, 19, um, and a little disruption two weeks into the school year is a lot better than class sizes of 23, 24. So we've got the space. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll find a candidate as quickly as possible, even if it's somebody that says, you know, under these circumstances I can do it this year, but we'd have to hire again further based on what kindergarten's look like next year, kindergarten looks like next year or where we're going to be in first grade for the coming year. Um, I believe that um, it's dollars already budgeted and moving budgeted dollars around. Um, and so it's a SAU level decision, but it would be nice regardless to have the school board's uh, vote of support or blessing, however you feel is appropriate. Um, Chairperson Lars said just kind of, it's not new money, it's uh, moving budgeted money around. Yep. Um, we've got a couple different possibilities. We are not an affluent district. We are not rolling in cash, but we had retiree payout savings that we've recently sorted out. We have adequacy money. We have. Mm -hmm. Um, folks that aren't able to pay their bills at lunch, and we have another tech rollout coming um, in the spring. Um, so the the adequacy money and other savings, uh, we have twice as much that we'd like to spend it on than uh, dollars, but can, this is one that's top of the list. Okay. No, no brainer. Okay. All right. Questions? Board Member Jameson. Yeah. I have comments. Can I give them? Okay. I feel very strongly about this just in general. Um, so COVID kindergarten, yes, I am as a school psychologist in the schools I'm in, these kids are struggling and we are having tier one difficulties with um, just executive functioning and emotional regulation. Um, the other piece of this, and I haven't been here, so I just kind of wanted to like put my observations out there. Um, I don't have the historic background on this, um, but I was looking at the enrollment report and there are really clear fluctuations over the years. It goes from like high 110s to like high 80s and like back and forth. Um, and there's not like a huge discernible pattern. Um, and it's interesting to me that in the past five years, we've moved from 
six classroom teachers at most grades to five. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just like echoing what you said, Superintendent Shea, that you know we know kids do better in 16 to 20 classrooms. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to me. Um, and so I guess, I, yes, I'm fully in support of this. I, I think it's necessary, not only, you know, policy wise, but also just good practice. Um, but I, I just want to make that observation that it seems like we've we've gone down on classroom teacher positions without a very clear drop in students over time. So just something to kind of think about. I, I can speak to that. I mean, the hist we, we have last year, year before, asked for enrollment reports, and the, that can start up again of why we're trying to get a, wh what's going on, who's moving out, who's moving in, are, are they shifting to as much as information that we can, are they shifting to another type of education or just moving and things like that. So, and then our enrollment when... I'll say 2013, 14, 15, about 1,800, about. Um, and Idlehurst had upwards of about 530 students. I'm making general, you know, it was a um, K pre-K to five school. And then with budget constraints, right, it from my understanding is my, in my views over the year the fewer students in the in the, the the classroom the better to a degree right if there's only a handful we can't really justify that and then there were such, such fluctuations with kindergarten you just they're they're incoming so a need for more preschool pre-k loading in having that housed in our district and then that connective services is something i think that that's absolutely necessary now and I think it's been absolutely necessary now I think preschool is essential for this but you just don't know with preschool and if you go into a classroom of 23 24 kids you know that's too many 25 I think is the the cutoff as our regulation but I think again like superintendent Shea 16 17 18 so does that help kind of in general we can ask for enrollment reports and it was budget it was largely budget and numbers okay. but when things shift and then we have to do this this is not ideal but with kindergarten you don't really have that previous year to um like plan for the numbers okay right. yeah Except that's helpful preschool. that's helpful yeah. thank you yeah okay board member clark so yeah so it was definitely budget like last year we were we talked long and hard about do we why are we cutting kindergarten teacher? Remember, we were like, what are we doing? But here we are. Um, so my thought is going forward. So I know in the past, you know, not, we probably can't answer this tonight, but like would this teacher potentially grow with these kids? Because I know that potentially um, first grade might be a large group of kids then. And are we, you know, so I know maybe not kindergarten so much, but I know when my kids were young and they were in elementary school, they had one teacher for two years. They kind of transferred with them. Was that a possible? I know it's hard to say at this point because it's so new, but like, are, or are we looking at hiring another first grade teacher to make up for that? Yeah, that's a much bigger question, the one, two, that wouldn't make sense just to do it in this instant, but if we want to, that's, that's a huge question to evaluate, and uh, there's a lot to be said for the teachers looping for a couple of years, but that's much bigger than this position and a separate conversation. Um, but we are, we're posting it as a, a real position, and the reality is we may find somebody uniquely available this time of year that says, I'm just interested in doing it for the year. We may also find a great candidate who says, no, I want to come work in Summersworth. That's not going to be a problem, whether that person's teaching kindergarten again next year or first grade. We've got enough wiggle room without bumping somebody else out of a position or having long-term implications because of where our enrollment numbers are. Yeah. So with this, right, you typically when we have something, we're adding a, we're adding a position and um, we're adding a position, would we say, for, for this year um, be, it, because it's not, it wasn't existing in our budget now. Um, we removed it or we had it on the uh, reductions um, for this budget and now we're responding to the growth, the enrollment. So first I would ask for a motion to suspend rules because we're going to have to make a, a, a motion on on this on this item, which is not typical, but it's um, timely. A motion. So a motion. To I motion to suspend rules. Do I have a second? second? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Okay. And now would we be looking for a motion for the um, 
to support the superintendent's recommendation of a additional kindergarten classroom teacher this year, 24-25. I make a motion to support the superintendent's recommendation for an additional kindergarten classroom for the year of 24-25. Second. Okay. Any discussion about this motion? Yep, board member Brown. Sorry, but classroom it means including a teacher, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, classroom teacher. Sorry, left brain. Enrollment. You know? Yes, <laughs> due to the enrollment, to the, to the exceeding enrollment numbers. All right, board, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, it's passed. Thank you, and good luck in the, in the hiring. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I have been looking. There are districts, um, and I don't know if this district has done it before in the past, that have... Uh, organizations do enrollment assessments and particularly study where you are in terms of births and move-ins and what's happening with preschool and doctors you know pediatricians and all that in the area including the uh, American Association uh, American Superintendents Association if you join there's you get a discount on these kinds of services so I'm I'm hopeful that we'll have something pretty quick that we could recommend and an idea have we done that does anybody know if we've done that in the past yeah I think the, we did NESDEC and we did an enrollment projections I think the last time we did it was 2018-19 I think I have that report ago. but we have done it okay yeah. so we're gonna reevaluate NESDEC mm -hmm. again too yeah I think it, looking from the board that kind of looks like a supportive thing and kind of a timely thing since it's been six years thank you no old unfinished business future meeting dates um, uh, <laughs> Budget and revenue, uh, September 18th. This would be board member Clark and um, board member D. St. Croix, September 18th at um, 5.30 at the SAU. Wait, budget. Yeah, we'll have, no, right, but we're gonna have to shift that. I thought we're shifting, yeah, me too. Shift which one? So we're shifting. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll okay. Well, well, we'll have to. Okay, we'll have to figure out. Well, the next one. October fifteenth, November fourth, and December third are on the books. Policy is uh, September twenty fourth, five forty five. October twenty second, November twelfth, December third, December seventeenth. If needed, we shall see. Our next board member a board meeting is the twenty fourth, October fifteenth, and 29th, November nineteenth, December tenth. Those are the last meetings of our. Um, calendar year uh, agenda item number 11 any comments by visitors this evening yes oh question yeah can I make a comment about the schedule or future meeting dates are we we did this with our policy are we able now that our district is on Google products like are we allowed or able to use the Google calendar, calendar to schedule just because it's easier if it's all in the same place with all of the committees and the meetings. And I the hear you. Let's look into that okay, cool. and get back to you. Because wouldn't it be great? Do you, do you don't you don't want to call each time to make? I, I just I, I mean I <laughs> I got a I flip wanna, phone now, so I'm just I, like I'm desperate. An for easier some, way to yeah, schedule. Like, do you, do y'all want to just schedule the rest of the meeting dates right now? Just kidding. But no. heard heard yeah. any comments by visitors? Seeing none. Um, agenda item number twelve. Any comments by board members? Uh, we will have a non-public, but no, not not to hush you. But any comments by board members this evening? Okay. Yep. Yeah, sorry, uh, board member Clark, Jamison, then Brown. I just want to say I'm thankful for this board and the public for sure, but thankful for us being able to communicate and talk and like, express our feelings and all the things. So I'm very thankful for everyone on this board. So that's it. We're going to leave happy. Love you. That's good. Board member Jameson. I'm also thankful for everyone on this board. <laughs> Love it. Um, I also wanted to say congrats to Steve Hudson. That's awesome. Board member Brown. Steve is getting another shout out. <laughs> I am so proud and, uh, that Steve is well deserving of of all of, of the um, uh, uh, I, for, I wrote it down. It was uh, New Hampshire um, Interscholastic Athletic Association Athletic Director of the Year. That is amazing. That's great. I think there's a fly. <laughs> <laughs> and I also appreciate um, the public coming and speaking, um, like Richard Brooks had done today. Um, I also want to say, um, come here to these chambers and vote tomorrow. Um, it is primary day. And what else do I need to say? We don't have any 
yeah, anyway, that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for listening. Yeah. And yeah. check the calendar for our future events. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. I was also going to yeah. say vote tomorrow. But I also wanted to say, um, you know, is that questions and transparency are so important among everyone. And I think that hopefully the public um, is seeing that this board is open to questions, that nothing is a hundred percent done uh, whether you're on the board or on the public doesn't matter questions are super important so thank you we're responsive yes board member Saldati I just wanted to let people know that if they're not registered to vote they can register at their polling location tomorrow yeah there is no school tomorrow but I encourage everyone in the public to attend school events um, there are the our sporting events our music events theater art whatever else is out there I encourage a lot happens in the fall so it's kind of a fun time to kind of get out there and outside um, with that agenda item 13 we do have a short non-public per 91 a 32 e 91 a 32 e do I have a motion to go into non-public motion to go into non-public for 91 a 32 e 2 e yep second second all in f okay roll call please thank Maggie you Maggie Larson yes Carrie Clark yes. Crystal D St. Croix yes. Marsha Brown yes Barbara Wentworth yes Bridget Jameson yes Gemma Soldati thank you so much what I wanted to say. thank you Miss <laughs> Farron thank, thank you. you good evening